Florida Keys were always worried about wind, waves, erosion, and hurricanes. And mangroves are our first line of defense against these elements. And they're essential to survival here in the Florida Keys. As you're driving down the overseas highway, it's hard not to stare at our beautiful turquoise blue waters along the way. But next time, try taking a little closer look at our amazing mangrove forests. They protect our homes, businesses, and provide critical habitat for all types of life. Did you spot the gator in that last clip? Welcome back to Lower Keys Living, and today, obviously, we are talking about mangroves. There's three types of mangroves that grow here in the Florida Keys, and we'll cover each of those. This is just a view of one of the barrier islands just off the overseas highway. You can see why they provide so much protection against uh, hurricanes, storm surge, the heavy storms that we get down here. So among the mangroves, red are the most common and they're most identifiable. They're the ones with those long arching roots. These are what you'll find lining most canals and shorelines. If you look close at the leaf clusters, you'll notice a yellow leaf in each group. These are sacrificial leaves and they absorb all the salt in the plant and they will drop off and die off, leaving fresh water for the remaining leaves. Black mangroves, they're recognized by their roots uh, which are called, and you saw those in the, the earlier clip, dead man fingers. They look like little fingers sticking straight up from the ground. These trees eliminate the salt by secreting it out the underside of each leaf. Go ahead, you can taste test those. If you think you got a black mangrove, lick the back side, and if it's salty, you've got a black mangrove. White mangroves have a little medium green leaf, a little lighter than the uh, black mangroves but each leaf has a pair of white head-like pimples at the base. These ooze out the salt of every leaf. So another easy way to identify those white mangroves. All mangroves provide critical habitat for adult fish and nurseries for juvenile. Here I'm taking you through the canal between Kajo Bay and um, Sugarloaf Bay. Then we're gonna take you here into Tarpon Creek. If you've watched our earlier videos, we've had you back in here fishing for snook and snapper, doing some lobstering in here. But just a beautiful, fun place to get up close with the mangroves. If you've got kids, they would love getting back in here. It really feels like a good jungle experience in here. The mangroves are one of the most important weapons we have against climate change. They're incredible climate vaults, absorbing enormous amounts of carbon, and they store it in the soils that they protect underneath. Um, they say this will hold and lock carbon in for a thousand years or more. So really critical protecting these trees. They also combat coral bleaching. They absorb enormous amounts of nitrates and phosphates and other chemicals used in farming. And their strong roots really protect against wind surge and erosion. And here, this is a photograph from 2017. You can see all the leaves stripped off this mangroves from this area from Hurricane Irma. And here in the clips going overhead, this is that same area today. And you can see everything has grown back in nicely. Mangroves are protected by the state of Florida. You are not allowed to trim them, definitely not allowed to cut them down on your property. If you are trimming them, you have to have a permit and the work must be done by a licensed arborist. So really critical, state's doing a great job of protecting these trees. Um, that's why a lot of times if you're buying a lot down here and it looks like it's on a canal, um, people say canal frontage, great ocean access. But beware of that because a lot of times these homes, if the lot is not developed, there's mangroves lining the shoreway and it can be difficult to get a permit to cut down those mangroves so you have access to the canal in your backyard. Um, so one thing just to look for if you're shopping for a property down here, make sure your shoreline has already been cleared of mangroves if you want to put a dock in um, and have access to that because again, I heard stories of people buying homes down here on a canal thinking they'd be able to put a dock in only to find out they're are not allowed and can't get a permit to cut down the mangroves along that canal. So just a heads up on that. Here again we're just up in the air over Tarpon Belly Creek looking that area in that photograph you saw earlier that was completely shredded and stripped brown by the winds from Hurricane Irma. But again, look how nice and lush and green this forest is now. Just a great place to come out here and visit. 
And if you don't have a boat, you can actually walk into this area up ahead here in the corner. You see the little white spot that's burned, burned out bridge. You can walk down there from the KOA campground on Sugarloaf from the one side. And if you go down to the jumping bridge, you can follow the trail out and reach the other side. Great space to hawk in, walk into and see the mangrove forest um, and great fishing from that spot there along the canal. Here you can see our boat just exiting the canal up in the very top right hand corner of your video. Here jumping back out to Content Keys, made the run out here to get some footage. Content Keys are just lined with these mangroves. They help protect those beautiful coconut palms you see. Um, the line in the beach and you see these guys just grow right into this coral, hard coral rock and provide a really nice barrier against the Gulf of Mexico. And up ahead here you can see, and I'll give you a close-up look, here is a black mangrove with those dead man fingers alongside a red mangrove with those arching roots up there on the left. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you got a little information about our mangroves and why they're so critical down here in the Florida Keys. We'll see you next week on Lower Keys Living.